In this video, what we're going to be doing is going over texture mode, which is what allows us to manipulate the way a texture looks on a piece of geometry. So if you want to change its position, its size, rotate it, these are all things we can do in texture mode and that will go. Over. So let's go ahead and get I started. I have a pretty simple scene set up. If you want to follow along, just a couple of basic pieces of geometry, a cube and a capsule here. Um, I have uh, a material I grabbed from the asset browser, this brick wall material, and I kind of made a sticker uh, material, which we'll talk about uh, later. But essentially texture mode, like I said, is if you want to change the way texture looks on an object. And unfortunately, with this and a lot of other textures or materials from the asset browser, we can't really see them that well unless we're rendering them. So this is what we have. And texture mode can be found right here. And so if you were thinking to yourself, oh, I have my geometry selected, I have my material tag selected, I can just come in here and you know move it, rotate it, scale it. What you're gonna find is that doesn't really do anything. And that is because by default, we are using the UVW mapping, right? So the coordinates and texture, the way texture should look kind of baked into every object that you can edit using the UV edit um, workflow, which I've talked about in a a previous video a long time ago. Um, but if you don't need a lot of that complexity, often just working with different projections can be sufficient, especially when you combine that with something like say a triplanar node. But these different projections, say cubic, okay, allow you to project your texture a bunch of different ways on your object. And so depending on the shape of your geometry, one may work a little bit better than others. So for instance, for a cube, cubic works pretty well. Um, for a capsule here, cylindrical, maybe even spherical will work pretty good. But essentially what's happening, and I think to explain it, it's a little bit easier to start with um, the flat projection here, is that it is projecting the texture, right, from that little square we see onto our geometry, just like a actual projector, right? Just like if this camera was a projector, right? Projecting an image, say in a movie theater, maybe you have one at home, okay? Um, but onto our piece of geometry, but instead of a camera, it's actually coming from this little square here, okay? And so what you can do is kind of manipulate it, whether it's moving it, whether it's scaling it, which is especially important if the texture you're working with isn't a square, uh, or even rotating it, okay? Now notice though, with this flat projection, there is nothing on the sides, okay? And that's because we're only getting one texture projected, and so if it's essentially coming from a straight on angle like we're seeing similar here, so it's just stretching on that last pixel along the sides here that you would get, okay? And so that's where other projection types can help. Cubic is similar, except rather than just a single projection, right, right, like this, you're also getting one from each of the polygons here, okay? So even though this isn't centered around the object anymore, it is repeating. So it is projecting, you know, this way as well onto our polygon right here, okay? Now, what's also happening, at least by default, and you can change that behavior right here is tile is turned on. So essentially this projection is just repeating over and over again in all six of the direct directions or based on the cube. Now I rotated it and kind of screwed this up, but you know, that's for the side projection, for the top projection here, it's just going over and over again. Apologize for the bad drawings. It's also going down. All right, you guys get the idea, okay? So that's why you're getting a little bit more of an even projection with cubic, okay? Um, especially on, say, a cube object. So that is what's happening, all right? Now we still have some issues here, and there are a few things you can do to kind of uh, streamline this process. You can also right-click on your material tag and choose fit to object, and that will fit your projection around your object. And regardless of what projection mode it is, cubic, flat, um, the good news is, you know, like I said, it does try to, to fit it, although it doesn't always do so in the correct axis. So if you're, especially if you're on something like flat, then you know you still may need to rotate it. So in addition to being able to move, rotate, and scale this, um, you can also get a little bit more precise if you need to um, with the coordinates tab here, right? You have position, right? You have rotation, 
as well as scale or really size in this case. And what you want to keep in mind is a lot of the materials here, I actually don't know if this one does, um, will have a size or scale in the name. And so in order to have the scale be correct, you want to match that projection. So this should actually be 200, okay? Now our bricks are actually their correct size. If we were to get out and measure a brick, it should be whatever the size of a brick is. I actually don't know what a brick should be. Something like what? I don't know, I guess if I'm eyeballing it, which you can't see, six by like two and a half or something like that, seven by two and a half, I'm not sure. If we wanted to check that, we could try and make an object about that same size. I don't really particularly care to do that. Um, but that's kind of the gist of it. Now, once again, if you are working on a different type of object, you may need to use a different projection, right? So maybe cylindrical is a little bit better for this since it is a essentially a tall cylinder. Um, flat, right, can also be a little bit interesting and to really kind of see and work with this, right, once again, using that texture mode, manipulating this however we want. And I think this also is a little bit easier to visualize if you're working with something um, like a sticker or logo that you're going to place onto another piece of object, like the logo I have here that I'm going to place onto our brick. Now, really quick, just how I've made this. Um, I know you guys don't have this, but uh, it's essentially any image with an alpha, right? If this is a PNG and this outer area is transparent. I used a color splitter node and piped um, it into the input here of the splitter. And then I'm taking the alpha and plugging that into the opacity. And you can see now what's happening is it's cutting out the areas that are transparent in the PNG. And so we can just drop this onto our cube, let's just say. And by default, right, with that UVW mapping, this is what we end up with, okay, where it's that cubic, it's essentially a cubic projection um, that's been saved into, um, I guess we don't have a UVW mapping tag yet because this isn't an editable object. Um, but what we can do if we only wanted one of these and not six of them, right, is to switch this to cubic, right? And like I was saying earlier, each side here is getting this texture projected. And on top of that, I should also look into the fact that this image is really, I don't think it's actually a square. I could be wrong. I swear it used to tell you the dimensions in here, but if I wasn't happy with that, it actually looks pretty close, so maybe it is. Once again, you can always kind of scale it as necessary. Um, however, if you don't want it to kind of tile like that, right? Uh, one thing you could do would be to switch the projection to say something like flat. That would only give you one. All right, but even then we may end up some with some weirdness, and especially if this was smaller, we might actually see it start to repeat, right? Um, and so we can uncheck tile here. And as we use texture mode to manipulate the position of this, rotate it, scale it, whatever it is we want to do, we are able to do so using texture mode. And that's really it, okay? So with that, that, we'll do it for this one. If there's anything else you would like to see, please leave me a comment down below. And if you found this video helpful, I would appreciate it if you could like it and subscribe to my channel. Until next time, take care.